Chapter 1 Before being arrested, tried, convicted, and ultimately executed by the state of Florida, Ted Bundy, perhaps the most notorious serial killer in American history, cut a bloody swath across my part of the panhandle. It began at dawn on Sunday, January 8, 1978, when Theodore Robert Bundy arrived at the Trailways bus station in Tallahassee and began to blend in among the tens of thousands of college students returning for the spring semester. After only a week in Florida's capital city, in the early morning hours of January 15th, shrouded by dark of night, Ted Bundy entered the Chi Omega sorority house at Florida State University through a rear door with a faulty lock. In less than 15 minutes, and within earshot of some 30 potential witnesses, he viciously assaulted four young co-eds. Sometime around 2.45 in the morning, he bludgeoned Margaret Bowman with a piece of oak firewood while she slept, after which he garroted her with a pair of nylon stockings. Moments later, he stole into Lisa Levy's bedroom and beat her unconscious, strangled her, tore one of her nipples nearly off, bit her so deeply in her left buttocks that it left his bite mark impression, and sexually assaulted her with a hairspray bottle. A few moments after that, he entered the adjoining bedroom occupied by Kathy Kleiner and broke her jaw and deeply lacerated her shoulder. A short while later, he snuck into Karen Chandler's room and brutally assaulted her, knocking her teeth out, breaking her jaw, crushing her finger, and leaving her with a concussion. In less time than it takes water to boil, Ted Bundy savagely attacked four young women inside the Chi Omega sorority house, murdering two of them. But he wasn't finished yet. Eight blocks away, Bundy broke into a basement apartment and attacked another FSU student. Cheryl Thomas, dislocating her shoulder and fracturing her jaw and skull in five places, leaving her with permanent deafness and an equilibrium complication that ended her dance career. On February 8th, Bundy stole an FSU van and drove east on I-10 to Jacksonville, where he unsuccessfully attempted to get 14-year-old Leslie Ann Parmenter into the van with him. On February 9th, in Lake City on his way back to Tallahassee, Bundy abducted 12-year-old Kimberly Diane Leach from Lake City Junior High School. On February 12th, Bundy stole yet another car and left Tallahassee, heading west on I-10 across our part of the Panhandle for Pensacola. On February 15th, at 1 in the morning, Bundy was pulled over by Pensacola Police Officer David Lee after the Volkswagen Beetle he was driving came back stolen in a wants and warrants check. This is what we know of what Ted Bundy did. But what about what we don't know? Before his execution in Florida's electric chair in 1989, Bundy confessed to killing some 30 women in 17 states. But in a recently released memoir, Bundy's former attorney, John Henry Brown, revealed Bundy confided in him that it was more than three times that. Did Ted Bundy kill over 100 women? If so, when? And where? And who? What did he do? Who did he attack and kill between arriving in Tallahassee on January 8th and the slaughter at Chi Omega on January 15th? Who did he murder and rape between his attack of Cheryl Thomas on January 15th and his abduction of Kimberly Diane Leach on February 9th? Who did he brutalize and butcher between leaving Tallahassee on February 12th and his arrest near Pensacola on February 15th. Could Ted Bundy be responsible for the disappearance of Janet Lee Lester near Mariana in the early morning hours of February 12th, following her Valentine's Day sweetheart's ball, as he made his way west 
on I-10. Could he be the monster responsible for the open, unsolved case that devastated an entire town, utterly shattered two families, and still haunts Jack Jordan, my dad, and the man who many believe let the killer get away? <laughs>